everybody, how are you? I hope you're doing well. And we are going to make a galvanized looking, metal looking pumpkin from a paper bag, glue, and a candle. Get a paper bag, mine's from Trader Joe's, okay? I saved all of these because they're good bags. They're heavy. This pumpkin is from the Dollar Tree. You don't need to go to the Dollar Tree. If you don't have one, you can uh, print one out. Just a clip art. If you have a Dollar Tree uh, pumpkin, one of the uh, pressed wood, you can use that or you can freehand, whatever the case. So we're going to trace is just making it. So I'm going to trace this, cut it out, and then I'll come back and we'll go to the second step. Okay, so I have the uh, pattern copied. And I needed something big, because this is a big, big pumpkin. So I'm just taking the container that held my glass mat from Crafter's Companion and I think this will work pretty well. And it's pretty stiff. So, just, I mean, if I had a box that was this size, I'd cut the box up, you know, but I didn't. So just whatever you have on hand, easy, fast project, you guys. And the first time, I did a video on this, but I made um, letters, I think it was, to put on jars. But, Back in the 70s, um, a lot of us used to take a lot of craft classes. They used to have craft classes at the high school at night or at the parks. And we made some really cool things out of paper bags. Very cool things with this method. So I'm going to keep this because I can use this for something else. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out fit it to the cardboard and then cut that cardboard out and then we'll start doing the uh, gluing. Note to self, make sure when you're cutting out whatever size pumpkin, if it's out of, you know, brown paper or paper and you're going to use it for decor to stand up or whatever the case, make sure you have a big enough piece of cardboard. This, <laughs> I don't know what I would have done had I not had this because look, it went from here, because I opened it up, down into the second part of it. You know what I mean when I opened it this way? Anyway, I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> live and learn. Learn and live. That's my motto. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to glue this part to here. You don't need to watch that. It's just wasting your time. And then I'll be back and we'll start the process. So I have the um, brown paper bag put onto that piece that I cut out from my glass mat. Now, you might be looking at this thinking, ooh, Davida's looking pretty wrinkled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's no problem. When I add this glue and start holding it over the flame, it's going to get a lot more wrinkled. Okay? So what you're seeing, it's not going to make a bit of difference. Okay. So our pumpkin is dry. We are going to put, okay, the pumpkin is dry. I haven't lit the candle yet. We're going to start putting the glue onto the brown paper now that it's dry on what I put it onto, okay? The most important thing to remember about this, well, actually two things. The first thing, you need to use tacky glue, and I'm not being sponsored. Wish I was. I have tried other glues. It does not work. I don't know what it is about the tacky. Don't know, but it was the same way years and years ago when we used to do our crafts with this. It was tacky glue. The other very important. Make sure you have enough glue. Okay, and I meant to tell you. I, I'm sorry, I forgot. You're going to need either rub and buff or some kind of a metallic silver or whatever color, bronze, gold, whatever color you want it to be. 
but we're not at that uh, point yet. Okay, so here's the part, and you have to put it close enough to the flame because you want all of that glue to get black, okay? <laughs> Extinguish the flame. And if you notice, I'm not getting close to the other part that's just the paper. I'm only getting where the glue has been put on it. But you have to put that flame close enough, right? To get that sooty look. And this will all make sense when I'm done. Again, a very inexpensive project, but it really packs a punch. And I should have put something down. That was not smart of me. Because this candle is really dripping. Okay, that's good for me to show you. All right, do you see that? So you want all of this, all of it, black. You don't even want that white showing, okay? You're going to want it just like that, just like this part right here. That's how you're going to want it. I'm going to go off camera and do this, clean this up a little bit, and I'll come back when it's all done before I start wiping it off. Okay, guys, I want you to see this. I can't lift it up. Do you see now it looks like it's all charcoaled? Couple spots, I because I had to hold this while I was holding it upside down like I had shown you in the beginning. So they didn't take as well, so we'll see what happens with that. So I'm gonna let this dry 24 hours. We'll come back, we'll take off the soot. We'll put our either our rub and buff or I can't remember the name of it. Um, I think of the name of it is just metallic or something. You get it in the aisle at any of the craft stores with the acrylic paint. It's a rub-on, and they have bronze, silver, uh, nickel, I think. Anyway, I'll probably do mine in silver because the silver will probably look the most like metal. So as soon as this dries, we'll get back together and we'll finish it. Okay. We're back, and I have let this sit for a few days, not just 24 hours. Because I had so much glue, you have to make sure that glue is completely dry before you start your wiping off process of the soot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet a paper towel and not wet it completely, really damp. And if you don't like getting your hands dirty, wear gloves because this soot is going to come off. So I just dampened it. Let's start here. You see that? And do you see that, how you're starting to see the brown through it? Okay, on camera, there's no need for it. But I do want to show you a little bit. See, it does get on, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, let me show you. Do you see the difference now? Do you see opposed here to here, how you're seeing that, br that uh, brown come through? All right, so I'm going to go ahead, wipe off as much as I want of this, and then I'll be back. Okay, this is what it looks like now. I took a damp paper towel, and it took about three of them, because that soot really comes off. But do you see the difference? Do you see now how you can see so much of the brown through it? Now, you might like that look, and that might be what all you want to do with it. What you can do now is just put a uh, sealer over it. It can be a... Uh, use an acrylic but you could do that if that's the kind of look you want but I want to give it more of a metal look like we've got a galvanized if you will okay so I have my wax paper down 
and I went ahead, I found my metallic luster, it's from Deco Art, and I have the silver spark. That's going to come closest to what I'm wanting to achieve. That's what it looks like. They have copper, they have gold, they have... What else do they have? I don't know if they have rose gold or not. I'm not sure. But again, I wanted more of a galvanized look. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of this out because I don't want to put a brush or anything in here that might make contact with the soot onto this. And if you always cut, you know, rip off enough wax paper, you can use that for your palette. What I want took it out of here. So I have it on my brush. I'll start up here. And I'm going to brush on in just small areas at first because I'm going to let it sit for a couple seconds and then I'm going to rub it off to where I want it. Okay, you see that. Okay, well, now my soot has been taken off, and now I have the metallic silver luster. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to wet this yet. I'm going to do it dry, and I'm going to wipe off what I want. Okay, now do you see how the black is through it a little bit? You know how galvanized have the darker shades of that silverish? Okay, now that I've seen what the dry does, I'm going to wet it a little bit. This is why you want to do it in little portions. You don't want to do the whole thing. And you can see it starting to come together like old metal. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. When I get halfway done, I'll come back. Okay, so here we are so far. And I'm hoping you can see. I'm moving it around a little bit so you can. Do you see here how it looks like old metal? Really looks like it in person. If you were to stand back from that, It looks like a galvanized pumpkin, but I left this part so you can see the difference. I still have to do this, but this is where I have been using it. And what I've done is I've taken a little bit of water, and then I've taken a little bit of the paste, and then I've rubbed it, and then I kept rubbing off as much as I wanted so it would have different... What the glue does is the glue gives it pits, if you will, and that goes into the crevices, but it just looks like an old piece of metal. And we did um, uh, Model T cars using this method. And, oh gosh, what else did we do? Oh, I wish I could remember. But they were gorgeous. I mean, they really were. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then we'll embellish it. And I'm going in a circular motion. Okay. The glue gives it a really cool texture. Okay, let's do a little more. And then I'll wipe off with a damp paper towel. Where the black was, how it's darker in its look. I just love that. This could be very much... Um, Steampunk, if you wanted. Galvanized, steampunk, whatever way you'd want to embellish this. Okay, guys. 
I wanted to show you one way you could do this. Now, like I said, you could really steampunk the whole thing up, meaning you could rust whatever embellishments you wanted to put onto it and glue it onto this, and maybe put a little bit of a rustish color, like just on the edges, if you will, shading it. I am not going to do that with this, but this is what it looks like with the brown, and you could do that and it would be pretty like that as well with you know a brown uh, bow or whatever you wanted to use. I'm going to use to go ahead and do what I've been doing and that is with the black and white and the white pumpkin but I just wanted to show you what it looks like with the brown okay okay you know how the metal um, like when you get the flower pots and all that from Dollar Tree or more from Hobby Lobby, how they have the brown like on the edges of it, if you will. I'm going to go ahead and do that with a little bit of gel stain on a paper towel. Kind of like it's rusting, if you will. Plus it gives it more dimension. And I'm not doing much. So I'm going to continue to do this and then I'll come back and we'll finish this off. Okay, so I know how I want to decorate it. And I'm going to use my Thankful from the Dollar Tree, you know, where you can get the three. I think it was Thankful, Blessed, and Harvest. On this one, it really kind of blends in. So I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm just going to stitch around all the lettering because I still want to keep that galvanized with this, but I want you to be able to see it a little bit better. So, and I'm also going to pop it up a little bit off of the pumpkin and use the flowers and leaves. And again, I'm making a bow like I did with my other pumpkin and then another bow to go with that. But in the meantime, what I have to do is I have one of these pumpkins, but it's a cream. I don't want the cream, I want white. Now I could use this one, but this one is bigger and I wanna keep it smaller. So I have an orange one as well. <clears throat> so I'm gonna paint this one white too. So I have two to put on here, because this is gonna go on my fireplace and it's going to go with everything else that I've made with the black and white. <clears throat> with the black and white. So I'm just going to put a little bit of paint. And I'm going to paint this orange one. This will probably take a couple coats. So when I get done with the pumpkins, and they're dry, I'll be back and we'll put it together. Okay, so I'm paint, I've am i painted the pumpkins white and I have these pop-ups. So I'm gonna cut just a little piece from here, like so. And I took the Sharpie and can you see how I did stitch marks around the word thankful? just so it'll pop a little bit because like I said I still want to leave that galvanized look and this is going to go on my fireplace next to my lantern which is a galvanized lantern I think it's going to look nice I don't want this to show Just to pop it a little bit, okay? So it's not laying just directly on the pumpkin, okay? So now we're going to 
make some more curly cues out of our silver wire. And if you had black wire, that would look pretty. Or even a Chanel stem. I might do a black Chanel stem as well as a curly cue along with it. Remember I showed you, you can wrap this wire on anything and the thickness of whatever you're wrapping it on is going to make it bigger or smaller. But since this is such a big pumpkin, I'm going with a little bit bigger. Okay. So I want to get a couple of those ready. And like I say, I might do the black Chanel stem. I think that just might be the ticket for this, you guys. And all of this started with a brown paper bag. Just a brown paper bag, that's it. All right. So I have our little curly cues ready. And I made the bow. Again, you know me. <laughs> this is the extent of my bow making. But I want to, I think I want, well, I can do that after. Okay. Decide which. Okay. And I don't like it right in the middle. I like it on the side. I think it looks prettier. And I always gravitate to go to this side instead of over there. I don't know why. And I think that brown just added to it. I like it. I'm going to add this rose. I'm so glad I got these a couple years ago because they have really worked out well for me in these DIYs this year. them off to the side. About the pumpkins, kids, right? All about the pumpkins. You see that metal look? Lift it up so you can see a little bit better. That's good. Okay, so now let's remember now it's gonna be on a stand, so I gotta make yeah, that'll be fine. And the black will help the metal stick out. You know what I mean? Here. And I am going to get that Chanel stem. I do think it'll add to it. Okay. I got the Chanel stem. I like the way it looks. I have one up here right now. And I'm curling this one on a pen instead of this. Do you see the difference? So it'll make it tighter. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to take these pieces of ribbon and just sporadically put them underneath. really like the way this is turning out. Gotta love those glue strings. Put on that. Okay. 
So there that is. Now let's get the pumpkins that I painted white. And this one can just, it's got a little clip on it. This could just be clipped on. And I think that's what I'm going to do because it dimensionalizes it. There. Yep, I think I want it there. Do you do that where you move stuff all over the place until it looks right? I'm just hooking it on. Not going to glue them on. Look at that. Look at the dimensional. I love it. Love it. Okay. I'm going to do a couple more of the wires and curl them up. And then I'll be back. Okay. So I want to bring you down just to show you closer. So here is the pumpkin. And there's the thankful that I went ahead and just stitched around with the Sharpie. And the pumpkins and the ribbon and the curly cues made out of wire and Chanel stem. I think it turned out beautiful. So this will go into my den next to my lantern. Guys, I really hope you'll try this. It's just a paper bag glue and some rub and buff or metallic wax. So here is another really cool, I think, DIY to make that will cost you very little money. Until we get together again, remember the world's a better place because you're in it. Don't ever, ever forget that. Talk to you soon.